In this unit, we are going to discuss the importance of practicing curiosity. We are all born with a natural sense of wonder, but unfortunately, there is a tendency to lose our sense of curiosity over time. So it is a skill we must deliberately practice. We will first ponder, why does curiosity matter to the reflective process? Then we will learn to question our assumptions and practice the art of curiosity. As you will recall from our section on cognitive bias, there are both implicit and explicit reasons why we make errors. We also hold a fundamental bias when we observe others making errors. We tend to attribute these to gaps in their knowledge or skills, when in fact most individuals would attribute their own errors to situational context or other factors that affect performance. This is often referred to as the fundamental attribution error and is one of the main reasons why we need to practice being curious in order to overcome this very strong bias. One of the more common sources for fatal errors in medicine doesn't come from something wrong, but from not doing something right. For example, failing to speak up or call for help. Oftentimes in the process of investigating why an error occurred, it is shown that somebody on the team possessed the correct information, but did not speak up. Let's explore some reasons why this might occur in teams that are not optimally organized to team. The halo effect is a phenomenon where we tend to defer to others who hold higher status, age, or experience, and we assume that they know better than us. Imagine the person who taught you radiology tells you that an x-ray is normal. When you thought you saw a pneumonia, it's easy to dismiss your own concerns, especially when you are unsure. Passenger syndrome happens when somebody else is seen as being in charge, and we may feel like we are just along for the ride, and it's not our role to spell check the process. This is a common cause of silence among students or trainees. Imagine you are observing a surgery for just a day, and the surgeon's about to use an instrument that you think dropped to the floor. Do you say something? Oftentimes, a team member might be so fixated on a task that requires high concentration that it is difficult to step out and also monitor the big picture. Maybe you are trying to insert a breathing tube and don't notice that the patient's heart rate is dropping. Sometimes our bias is simply about perspective. We all see a different part of the elephant in the room. For example, maybe you're the fourth person coming into the room to try and obtain a difficult IV on a patient. When the father asks, does he really need an IV anymore? He just started drinking an hour ago. So what are the steps to help us avoid these cognitive traps and start to practice curiosity? Step one, avoid making assumptions. This means that first you need awareness that you are making an assumption. You can try to do this by acknowledging cognitive and personal biases, considering alternatives, maintaining an open mind, and being genuine throughout this process. I have three amazing daughters, and I'm going to share with you a little game that we played when they were younger to help us avoid assumptions. We call it the open-minded game. To play, all you have to do is come up with as many explanations for your sister's behavior as you can, and you need to be genuine about it. If you can only genuinely come up with one plausible explanation, then you need to dig a little bit deeper. How about you? Think about what it means to be genuinely curious. Do you have any long-standing beliefs that you held to be true, but eventually found out that they were wrong? Think of a moment that you were truly surprised, and how did you feel in this moment? 